present hour this hour that's your hour what are you father we well, thank you for this retreat thank you for your people here at the alpha location port Harcourt, all over nigeria all over africa beyond africa everywhere we're asking lord this will be the hour of power power for salvation power for healing power for deliverance power for total breakthrough lord i pray wipe the tears away take the sorrows away and let the joy of the lord be the strength of everyone in jesus name Confirm each in every life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We have come starting today for our retreat. The retreat time is a time of waiting before the Lord. We start from the morning till the evening we're starting today it continues tomorrow and then saturday and sunday and monday i want to plead with you be present in every session the lord will fill your cup to overflowing your life your family the work of your hand Everything that concerns you will never be the same again in Jesus' name. You will go higher. You will grow greater. After this retreat, you'll find power. Power. 
power for your hour in Jesus name tonight we're starting with the message Christ our Passover we're looking at first Corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 6 it says your glory is not good know ye not that a little leaven lift not the whole lamb look at verse 7 in verse 7 Porch out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lamb as ye are unleavened even for even Christ look at this now here is where the topic came from even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us Christ your Passover my Passover our Passover he has been sacrificed for us look at verse 8 in verse 8 therefore because Christ has been sacrificed for us let us keep the feast with the old without not with the old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth I pray that the Passover that Christ himself has made for you will become effective in your life. From tonight, the power of the Lord for this present hour will work unlimited, unhindered, unrestricted in your life in Jesus' name. I thought Potakot will say, Amen. Christ, our Passover. We're looking at the subject in three perspectives. Number one, the promise and condition of the Passover. Number two, the provision for the commonwealth of the Passover. Number three, the proclamation of covenant beyond the Passover. Let's look at the first one, the promise. The promise and condition of the Passover. Actually, as we talk about the Passover, it first took place in Exodus. Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 12, where God himself spoke about the Passover for the children of Israel. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods, all the idols of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. God said, when he sees the blood, the blood that had been taken from the sacrifice of the Lamb, he said, when I see the blood, I'll forgive your sin. I'll take away your guilt. I take away your condemnation. I'll take away your punishment. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. As we look at what God has done at that time, and is going to do for us today there are three things we look at here under the promise number one the promise of the lord for the passover number two the preparation with no leaven before the passover number three the protection from the lord during the passover look at them one by one number one the promise god is giving you a promise 
Say, God is giving me a promise. And you know, God is not a man that he should lie. Now, the son of man that he should change his mind. As he said, and shall he not do it? He said it for them. And he did it for them. And the promise is given you today. It will fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. The promise of the Lord for the Passover. Look at that text on us again. And look at chapter 12, verse 23. Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. And for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door. And will not suffer, will not permit, will not allow the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. That he is for them when they sacrificed the lamb, the animal. And they took the blood as the Lord had directed. And they put upon the lintels of their houses, upon the side post of the door then the Lord said the evil angel the angel of destruction passing through the land at that time that that angel once he sees the blood he will pass over that house why? the reason is because all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God and the soul that sinneth, it shall die. But the Egyptians had sinned, the world had sinned, and the Israelites had sinned. Normally, even the Israelites should have died. But a lamb died on their behalf. And when they applied the blood, it showed that a lamb had been the substitute. And that death cannot take place two times on the animal, on the Israelite. That's why God said, when I see that that lamb had been sacrificed for you, and I see the sign of the blood, then I'll pass over you. Look at that in Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 23. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then in verse 24, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, it says, Whom God has set forth to be the propitiation and the sacrifice is His blood that covers our sin takes away our sin and tonight if it has not happened to you before it will happen to you tonight yeah. forgiveness and freedom and then judgment will pass over you judgment will pass over me judgment will not be upon your head again yeah. amen to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. He tells us in John chapter 5 verse 24. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, he has eternal life everlasting life you have everlasting life you have eternal life normally because you have sinned because you have been living in sin death should have come eternal death death forever to be in the place totally separated from god but you turn around you say i trust in christ he died for me he shed his blood for me and the moment you believe 
eternal death will be taken away from you. Eternal punishment will be taken away from you. And you will have everlasting life. What will you have? And he says, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That the promise, it will be fulfilled. What preparation do we make? What preparation do you make? Look at number two there. Number two, the preparation with no leaven before the Passover. We're looking at Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 19. Exodus 12, verse 19. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Leaven is like what we call yeast. When you put it in the dough, that you make bread with, it makes it to swell. And that leaven is likened unto sin. When it comes into life, it corrupts the life. It changes the life. It makes the life to swell up in the wrong direction. And so God said, in preparation for the angel of death, angel of judgment to pass over you must take leaven away from your houses let's look at galatians chapter 5 reading from verse 7 galatians 5 verse 7 ye did run well who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth look at verse 8 in verse 8, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Verse 9, it says, A little leaven leaveneth the whole lamb. Now, let me explain that to you. The Lord said, Take leaven away, sweep leaven away, and that leaven is representing symbolizing evil sin iniquity transgression then if somebody says no not necessary leave all the leaven there and leave all the contamination there and god will still save you then the word of god says that persuasion is not of god we must take leaven away and it explains look at verse 19 in verse 19 now the works of the flesh for us to understand you know now we're not talking about bread we're talking about you we're talking about man we're talking about man woman boy girl that wants to escape judgment and he wants to come to everlasting life eternal life the life of god in man and so the level we are to take away now he refers to them as the works of the flesh their manifest which are these adultery that's something to take away fornication that's something to take away uncleanness lasciviousness look at verse 20 idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies verse 21 envies murders drunkenness rebellions and such life is saying all sin all iniquity all evil all transgression all these bad bad things and such like 
of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do present tense, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But I will inherit the kingdom of God. I will inherit the kingdom of God. By the grace of God, because of the sacrifice of Christ, you will inherit the kingdom of God. What preparation do we make? We take the leaven away. All these things that the Lord has shown us, that leaven represents, we sweep them away. We turn away from them. We repent from them. Eternal life will come to you tonight. Number three here. Number three, we're looking at protection from the Lord during the Passover. Protection from the Lord during the Passover. Exodus chapter 12 verse 13. It says, And the blood shall be to you for a token, for a sign, upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When he sees the blood, he will pass over you. When you believe on the blood of Jesus Christ that is shed on the cross of Calvary, and you said, that's for me, that's for me, I believe, I accept. When I see your face in the blood, it will pass over you. Calamity will pass over you. Destruction will pass over you. Plague will not stay, will not abide in your house in Jesus' name. The plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. No more destruction. Look up here. I said for you. Where are you? For you. No more destruction in Jesus' name. It will not come upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Look at Psalm 125 verse 2. Psalm 125 verse 2. At the mountains around about Jerusalem. So the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Amen. Little amen. amen. At the mountains surround Jerusalem. The Lord was, you applied the blood of the Lamb, the blood will protect you. The blood of Jesus will protect your life, will preserve your life. And the Lord, he'll be before you. He'll be behind you. He'll be above you. He'll be around you. And no evil will come near you anymore in Jesus' name. But, 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 you must believe in the blood of Jesus that is shed for you. And I'm going to give you a chance, as I finish the message, to believe in the blood of the Lamb. And I'm telling you, every evil sin will pass away from your life in Jesus' name. If the devil is running after you, as you say, I believe in the blood of the Lamb, that devil will stop immediately. If an evil spirit is trying to grab you and choke you, immediately you believe in the blood of Jesus, that evil spirit is hand will be cut off from your life. Free. Free. You'll be free in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 91 verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Let me explain. Let's say this a house, that's habitation. But now God himself becomes your habitation when the blood of his only begotten son when that blood is believed and it is upon you god 
is your habitation now tell me if you are dwelling in god and god is your habitation can the serpent spirit crawl in where god is can sickness crawl in where god is everything coming from the devil everything coming from the spiritual serpent everything coming from the powers of darkness everything tonight gone in jesus name look at verse 10 it says there shall no evil befall thee me me there shall no evil befall no evil will befall you on the road, in the way, anywhere, in the town, in the village. Because once that blood of the Lamb is applied to you, and the angels know that this blood is applied to your life, anywhere you go, you are the son of the Most High God. And because of that, no plague will come near your dwelling in Jesus' name. Verse 11, in verse 11, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. There's something wonderful for the rest of your life. Today, today, today is the beginning of a better life for everyone. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you say, yes, it's mine. I believe Christ is my Passover. I embrace that. I believe that. I accept that from today. This is the beginning of a new life of a better life, of a higher life, of a happier life, of a protected life in your life in Jesus' name. Now, that is the promise. Let me go to point number two now. Point number two, the provision for the commonwealth of, of the Passover. When we say commonwealth, all the people in the world, commonwealth, that believe in the Passover. Here is what is going to happen. Let me read to you here from Galatians chapter 6, verse 16. Galatians 6, verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, according to this rule, they believe in the blood of the Lamb. They take the leaven away from their houses. They take sin away from their life. They repent. And then they believe in what Christ had done and promised for them. And they walk like that. With the consciousness, Christ is mine. I belong to Christ. His blood has forgiven me. His blood has set me free. And they walk with that understanding. As many as walk according to this rule peace be on them peace be on you and mercy and upon the israel of god we are now the israel of god the commonwealth what happens then three things number one manna for strength from the perfect lamb Number two, message for sustenance in the pleasant land. Number three, marvels of salvation from the powerful Lord. A Lord is waiting for you. Look at number one, manna for strength from the perfect land. After the Lord passed over them, and they were not destroyed they came out of the land of bondage you will come out tonight bondage will go tonight oppression will go tonight and then he now fed them with manna the lord will fill you 
it will feed you spiritually it will feed you physically and it will feed you in every way you will not lack in your life anymore look at exodus chapter 16 we're reading from verse 15 and when the children of israel saw it they said one to another it is manna for they wist not they knew not what it was and moses said unto them this is the bread which the lord hath given you to eat manna everybody shout manna now look at verse 35 he gave them first day all that week all that month all the months of the first year second month third month blessing is coming upon your life every day of your life blessing every day of my life blessing look at verse 35 and the children of israel did each manna 40 years think about that until they came to a land inhabited and they, they did each manna until they came to the borders of the land of canaan but if there was no passover the manna will not come you couldn't jump out of egypt without the passover and then take manna first of all the passover and then after the passover the lord does not leave you there he now gives you manna what's manna by the way psalm 78 reading from verse 24 and had ranged down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven that's it manna was the corn of heaven look at verse 25 in verse 25 man did eat angels food man did eat angels food why because the blood had been shed for them they believed in the blood and the lord passed over them and then after that time now he said i will give you a taste of heaven you i will give you a taste of heaven what is she what is he there a taste of heaven no sorrow in heaven no cry in heaven no sickness in heaven and there is no disappointment in heaven your life is going to change tonight he will give you a taste of tell me man did eat angels food he sent them meat to the fool he will do it for you now we need to understand how god has now done it for us john chapter 8, 6 i'm reading from verse 48 i am the bread of life christ that came christ a passover is also the bread of life look at verse 49 it says in verse 49 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead in verse 50 it says this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die you will not die before your time believe on the lord jesus christ life is available for you verse 58 in verse 58 this is that bread which came down from heaven not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead he that eateth of this bread shall live forever who is that i said who is going to live forever you as you believe on the lord jesus christ verse 63 it says in verse 63 it is the spirit that quickness 
The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. When you believe and accept the words of Christ and you live by that word, you'll come to life. And that life will keep on increasing, increasing until life everlasting. Look at number two there. Number two there is the message for sustainers in the pleasant land. The message for the sustainers in the pleasant land. The pleasant land is the land the Lord is taking us to. Look at Psalm 106. I'm reading from verse 24. Psalm 106 verse 24 yea they despised the pleasant land that's the land of promise you will not despise the pleasant land i can't hear you amen you know what it is they said we're looking for the cucumbers of egypt we're looking for the onions of egypt they said even this manner they need to appreciate the provision of god they said we don't want to go anywhere take us back to egypt you will not go back to the world the lord is bringing you out out of darkness out of captivity out of bondage out of evil out of corruption you will not go back there in jesus name the pleasant land is the land of joy of provision of goodness the lord is taking us over they believe not his word verse 25 the murmured in their tents they hearkened not unto the voice of the lord but now the message that keeps us going on and the message that sustains us matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 4 in matthew chapter 4 verse 4 but he answered and said it is reaching that's the message that sustains us in the pleasant land whatever is reaching in god's book of life Whatever is reaching by those prophets and by those apostles that God had sent, it is reaching. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This message of God from his book will sustain your life. Any crossroad you find yourself, this word will sustain your life. Any danger, any temptation, any trial, this word will sustain you to the end in Jesus' name. When you are tired, it will quicken your life. When you are sick, it will heal your body. When you are sorrowful, it will bring you joy. When it appears strength is gone, new life and strength will come for you in jesus name message for sustainers in the pleasant land number three here number three the marvels of salvation your life will become a marvel people will look at you and they will say marvelous they look at the work of your hand they'll say marvelous they look at your posture at your joy at your happiness they'll say marvelous brother marvelous sister marvelous amen it is confirmed in jesus name the marvels of salvation from the powerful lord exodus chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 2 the lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation he is my god and i will prepare him an habitation my father's god i will exalt him that's a marvelous life he says the lord is now my salvation look at verse 6 it says in verse 6 thy right hand O lord it become glorious in power thy right hand O lord has dashed 
in pieces the enemy and then in verse 11 it says who is like unto thee O Lord among the gods who is like unto thee glorious in holiness fearful in praises doing wonders and I pray the wonders of the Lord that has already started in your life will never end look at Acts chapter 4 reading from verse 12 it says neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and remember is Christ our Passover and already is sacrificed for us this blood <clears throat> is shed for us and we believe that and so we have the marvels of salvation you have the marvels of salvation there's joy is salvation joy will come to you peace is salvation peace will come to you there is happiness in salvation happiness will come to your life there's forgiveness in salvation forgiveness will come to you there's freedom in salvation and freedom has come to you already and then there's assurance in salvation you will walk with confidence in life you will know christ is mine i belong to christ therefore i have assurance all his promises will be yes and amen in your life in jesus name we come to point number three now point number three the proclamation of the covenant beyond the passover at the point of uh, passing over that is when the lord said when i see the blood i will pass over you they didn't know what was still come look at second kings chapter 23 and verse 21 and the king commanded all the people saying keep the passover unto the lord your god as it is written in the book of this covenant see those two things there passover and then covenant passover i'll pass over you and immediately the passover took place then a covenant came three things number one the promised benefits of the healing covenant there's a healing covenant and that covenant of healing is taking place in your life tonight in jesus name number two the privileged believers in the holy covenant it's a holy covenant and God who made that covenant is holy. He will not disappoint you in Jesus' name. Number three, the present birthright in the heavenly covenant. Healing covenant, holy covenant, heavenly covenant. Number one, number one, the promised benefits in the healing covenant. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12 it says wherefore it shall come to pass in your life it will happen in my life in my life tonight it shall come to pass therefore wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which is swear unto thy fathers. What covenant is that? Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and the Lord shall take away from, from, mention your name. The Lord shall take away from, from you all sickness. Praise the Lord. Cancer will go. 
blindness will vanish away. Romance, or uh, 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 whatever they call it, it will vanish away from your life in Jesus' name. Fibroid is going. Insanity will vanish away. And broken bones will be mended together. Arthritis will vanish away. And all those things that is walking about and trying to disturb your life. Tonight, they'll pack their load and go in Jesus' name. He said, he said, the Lord will take away all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee and but he will lay them upon them that hate thee amen, amen. look at Psalm 103 Psalm 103 you will bless the Lord tonight you will give testimony tonight the joy of the Lord will drive away every sin that is evil in your life in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within, within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2 there. In verse 2 it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. And then in verse 3, it tells us in verse 3, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? How many of your sins will he forgive? How many of your transgressions will he forgive? He forgiveth all your iniquities. How many of your diseases will he heal? Seriously, seriously. How many of our diseases will he heal tonight? I mean, assuredly, if you are sure beyond any shadow of doubt, how many of your diseases will he take away tonight? Who healeth all thy diseases? And the Lord is doing it for us here. He's doing it for everyone connected with us now all over in every country in Africa. Give me a good amen. In all the countries beyond Africa. Say amen. You know, we had a retreat some years ago and in Canada, far away in Canada, there was a this sister, white Caucasian sister, that had been married but there was no child but as we held the retreat and she believed in the lord and she believed the prophet the messenger of the lord after that retreat she went back home and then lo and behold it happened she got pregnant and now she delivered the child the only child she got miracle child and now she's rejoicing and giving testimony and blessing the Lord with all her soul and with all her mind that now she had a living, healthy son as it happened to her, it will happen to you. Because he, the Lord, he will renew your strength. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4 there, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wish I could come to you directly, personally there, and say, the Lord is talking about you. I said, the Lord is talking about you. That he redeemeth your life from destruction. Who crowneth thee? The angels can see that crown on your head. Even the enemy can see that crown on your head. The Lord has lifted you up through that Passover. You'll never come down again. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Look at verse 5. Who satisfies thy mouth? Who satisfies thy mouth with good, good things? So that the youth is renewed like the eagles amen you know 
when you think of what God is doing. Just in the other crusade we just had now, this last, uh, last month by Elsa stage. We, you know, were in the, in the crusade. And there was this woman that brought a nephew or cousin, a boy. This boy had lost the father. The father was born deaf and dumb. Until the father died, the father remained deaf and dumb. And but this child that was born, obviously, before the father died, that child too was born, as the father was deaf and dumb, this boy was deaf and dumb from birth. And now he came to the crusade. And the boy now of age. And as we prayed, as we are going to pray tonight, and God answered that prayer, this prayer for you, the Lord will answer. And so, as we prayed and said the final Amen, it just occurred to the sister that brought him to call his name. And he called his name. And then he turned. He was surprised. They blocked their ears and somebody stood behind and called the name. And then he answered. Then they now faced him and pronounced one. What did he say? Two. What did he say? Three. What did he say? The Lord had healed the deaf and dumb. When they got back home, they now continue. They said, Jerry. He said, Jerry. Maya. He said, Maya. My name. He said, my name is. He said, is. I'm telling you, God is at work. I said, God is at work in your life. In your life. In your family, the healing covenant will produce results in your life in Jesus' name. Number two, number two here, the holy covenant, the privileged believers in the holy covenant. I'm looking at Luke chapter chapter one, verse seventy-two, to perform the mercy promised. To our fathers and to remember his holy covenant he will remember it for you i said you remember it on your behalf and then it says verse 73 to perform it says the oath which is swear to our father abraham 74 that 74 now 74 that he will grant unto us unto me unto me he will grant unto you that you being delivered out of the hand of your enemies might serve him without fear fear of cockroach fear of serpent fear of uh, evil fear of darkness Fear of occultism, fear of evil people, it will totally deliver you. Fear of enemies, it will deliver you. That it might deliver us from the hand of our enemies and might serve him without fear. You will get to where you are going to. What God has ordained for your life, you'll get there in Jesus' name. Because the fear that somebody will stop you, somebody will hinder you, somebody will double cross your way, all that fear is taken away. Look at verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And somebody said, Amen. Look at number three there. Number three. The present birthright in the heavenly covenant. The present birthright in the heavenly covenant. Second Chronicles chapter 6, we're reading from verse 14. 
2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 14, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven, nor in the earth, which keepest covenant and showeth mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5 and said I beseech thee O Lord God of heaven God of heaven the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant is the God of heaven he keepeth covenant that's where heavenly covenant came from and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments now everyone that has passed through that portal that christ has made by the redeeming blood on the cross of calvary has a birthright because we're members of his family family right we're members that have taken part of his redemption redemptive right were people that he has died for and is our sacrifice our substitute is the birthright that came <clears throat> through the sacrifice god bless you through the sacrifice of calvary now esau had a birthright you have a birthright esau sold it's some birthright. I will not sell my birthright. <laughs> you will not sell your birthright. One day he was tired coming from the farm. And then he said, Jacob, my brother, can you give me that pottage? Part of that pottage? I'm hungry. And Jacob said, one condition. You can't go to the kitchen and cook for yourself. You can't wait 30 minutes and prepare the food. You want my lentils? Give me your birthright. And he said, all right, all right. What will birthright do me? Take the birthright. And then, uh, instead of saying God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Esau, no. He has sold the birthright. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of, God of Jacob. God becomes your God fully when you keep that birthright when you say i will not sell my birthright the god of power your god the god of healing your god the god of wonders your god the god of satisfaction your god the god of all supply your god when you keep that birthright and you don't sell that birthright because of a pledge of rice or because of the requirement or need of the flesh you will not sell your birthright this god will be your god this christ will be your savior from now and forever in jesus name the passover is going to pass over you now calamity will pass over you judgment will pass over you when i see the blood i will pass over you the promise is unto you and to children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call the lord is calling you now it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed he wants to forgive all your sins all your iniquities all your transgressions he wants to pass over you he wants judgment to be something forever gone from your life so that from tonight as you stand up as you walk anywhere you go no judgment again no punishment again no evil again but you must clear your life of that leaven we read about you must clear your life of all that evil sin everything that is called sin transgression evil iniquity say lord i did it in the past 
I am sorry. I turn away from them. Forgiveness will come immediately. If you want that forgiveness right now, that salvation right now, and you want judgment to pass, you want punishment to pass, you want all the consequence of the sins you have committed to pass away from your life, wherever you are now, raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. God bless you. Raise up that hand. And then you are ready that all the level, all the evil, all the sin, all the transgression, you're willing to take away. You're turning away from them with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Raise up that hand. God bless you. Anyway, you are here and in any other location, as you raise up your hand, you can stand up. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Stand up right there. You say, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. You're coming out of the land of bondage. You're coming out of the land of darkness. And the Lord is going to pass over. That judgment will not come over your life anymore. While you're standing up, just bow your head there and say, Lord, I thank you for this mercy. I thank you for this chance that all my sins can be forgiven. That all my iniquity can be taken away. Lord, I accept the sacrifice of Christ for me. I accept the blood that is shed for me. I believe all the guilt all the condemnation of my sin you take away right now thank you lord thank you thank you lord believe it's done father we well, thank you i bless your name for all these our brothers and sisters who raised up their hands here and in every location and now they have accepted that Jesus died for them to take all their sins away with the condemnation and the guilt. I pray according to your promise, which cannot fail, forgive them. Set them free. As you promise, let judgment pass over. That they will not come into judgment, into punishment, anymore in Jesus name cleanse them let today begin the day of their salvation let the joy of salvation the peace in salvation the freedom in salvation the assurance of salvation be theirs right now thank you Lord we know it is done in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are coming to you right there. They want to take the details that they'll ask you, ask from you, and the Lord preserve you in the salvation in Jesus' name. We're we'll calling on our state pastor here, Pastor Andrew Sagi, to lead us in this counseling session. And then I'll come back and lead you in the healing covenant. Pastor. Praise the Lord. I appreciate your clapping. Miracle. Miracle, healing, deliverance. He brought them out, and there was not one feeble person among them. All your feebleness will vanish away. 
Sickness will vanish away. Health problem will vanish away. Anything that is called disease will vanish away out of your life in Jesus' name. The Lord will put testimony in your mouth. Joy in your soul. Strength in your body. Power for your present hour. Power for your pre present hour. It's coming your way. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And right now, there will be power at this present hour. Father, we come to you. You are a merciful God, compassionate God, a loving God, a faithful God. You have promised you will not fail. You have done it for others. You will not be partial. You will do it for everyone as we call upon you in Jesus' name. Christ is our Passover. And he has been smitten for us. By his tribes, we're healed. Brother, sister, son, daughter, anywhere, everywhere, the stripes of Christ will heal you right now. Lord, bring the healing down upon everyone in Jesus' name. Insanity madness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Every form of swelling in your body, I command, vanish away in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, be healed in Jesus' name. Respiratory problem, infection, blood from your body, dry up in Jesus' name. Every form of internal bleeding, cancer, ulcer, anything that is called sickness internally, be healed in Jesus' name. Deafness, be healed. Dumbness, be healed. Blindness, be healed. And I pray for those who are lame, having arthritis, pain in the joints, be healed in Jesus' name. Broken bones, be mended right now. Healing for every bone in Jesus' name. Lord, everyone, right? Center, left, back, front, in the halls, everywhere, healing, miracle, deliverance, confirmed in every life in Jesus' name. Every location, every country. Those who are by themselves, social media, radio, television, large days in the hour of power. And I pray the power of healing, deliverance, miracle will come upon every life now in Jesus' name. Confirmation, manifestation. Operation in every life. It is done. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.
it is done. I said it is done. Check up yourself. Your miracle is there already.